there's one thing that so many of us are striving for, and that's to be more of who we really are. And this is part of what makes failure so difficult for us because we tend to take it personally. We tend to ask, what did I do wrong in our effort to course correct? Because we don't want to go through that kind of failure again. Today, we're talking about one simple shift in perspective that can help us embrace failure without disempowering ourselves. This podcast is all about helping you with your spiritual growth so you can have success on life's journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. I hope today's episode inspires you to look more closely at your successes, your failures, and surprisingly, your relationships. So here we go. Hi there, and welcome. My name is Raimi, like do re Me. I'm a best-selling author and creator of the Get Unstuck Revolution. I help extraordinary women just like you dissolve the obstacles in your path so you can bring success to you. Now let's get started with today's video. Okay, let me jump off the screen here so I can see my laptop. And today we're talking about one simple shift in perspective that can help us embrace failure without disempowering ourselves. We're talking about the beautiful recalibration that can happen after heartache, whether it's a failure in business, failure in a particular project, or even failure in relationships, whether at work or at home. Because if we can recalibrate into more of who we really are, we're taking steps toward our next success if you'd like to see success in full abundance along life's journey, and if you're wanting to tap into a greater knowingness and align with the higher consciousness of your infinite self, instead of the lower ego thinking that pushes success away, then this episode is for you. It's time to be unabashedly, unapologetically, happily untethered to ego thinking. It's time to align with the higher energies of our soul's path instead. Today's episode is for you if you wonder, what are the most magical, empowering questions I could be asking myself? How can I become more of who I am and who I'm meant to be? And how can I embrace failure when I still feel so broken? Yes, these episodes are about how to find your hidden power when you want to transform challenges into successes. I like to call it the audacity of alchemy. Because when we're feeling stuck, it's never the situation that has us stuck. It's our energy that's become stuck in anxiety, overwhelm, doubts, worries, frustrations, indecision, and even anger. And often, this is because of a spiritual injury that we've experienced, some kind of hidden trauma. So it isn't the pain of the situation. It's the pain of not being connected in the natural energy of who we really are, of being connected to that magical part of us that's a creative vibrational being who can use positive energies to create what we want and bring it into physical manifestation. We can allow our manifestations to materialize and not get stuck in the negative vibrations that block them. These positive energies that we talk about so much are where we find the magic of alchemy because our choice of frequency, our choice of those higher energy thought patterns can change the course of our journey. And you know, there's one thing that so many of us are striving for, and that's to be more of who we really are or who we're meant to be. And this is part of what makes failure so difficult for us because we tend to take failure personally. We tend to ask, what did I do wrong in our effort to make things go right? Because we don't want to go through that kind of failure again. But sometimes we end up looking at the practical side of things. We look at our business or the project that just failed or what was our part in making things go so wrong in our relationship. But at our core, we don't really want to know what went wrong. What we're really reaching for is how can I become more of who I really am? How can I reach and expand to be more of who I really am? You know, as humans, we have a deep desire to find something outside of this physical illusion, outside of what we see in the physical world. Because on some level, we understand that a failure in the physical world isn't who we are. It doesn't define us. A failure in the physical world is an illusion asking us to rise above it and become more than what we're seeing. So as humans, we have a desire to find something outside of this physical illusion, outside of what we see in the physical world. This something else that we're looking for is love. But love is kind of a big word, isn't it? 
you know, <clears throat> I remember years ago, a man from Argentina said to me, you Americans, you have so many definitions for love, romantic love, love of life, God's love, self-love, unconditional love, playful love, obsessive love, parent-child love, and oh, how much I love my cat. We could probably come up with a hundred different meanings for love if we really wanted to. But this is what we're seeking outside of the physical illusion. We're seeking love. So what we talk about most here on this podcast is that love is an expression of positive energies. Any positive energy, really, compassion, understanding, connection, joy, and so many others. Love is an expression of positive energies. And as humans, we have a desire to express and create energetically, either through positive energies or positive emotions. Now, we can easily get off track if the negative thought patterns get a hold of us. For instance, it can be tricky to hold a positive vibration when we're going through the muck of a divorce or financial disruption or some other failure. But we still have a desire deep down to express and create energetically. We like to express these positive energies. We recognize that we are creative vibrational beings who can use our energies to create what we want and bring it into physical manifestation. We like to see transformations and change. And while we can certainly take positive actions toward what we want to create, we inherently know that everything is created energetically first before we take these actions. We create through our thoughts, and this is why it's so important to direct or express positive energies through our positive thoughts. It's our thoughts that create reality. It's an exact science, good or bad. What we think about is what we create. We struggle with negative ego thinking sometimes, and we end up with results we don't want, some kind of failure. And even in our darkest moments, we still want to transform these failures, right? When we think thoughts of positivity, any positive thoughts, we're thinking thoughts of love. And so when we experience a failure, it very likely means that the failure manifested itself because of thoughts of negativity, either our own or the negative energies of people around us. And so what we're striving for is to eliminate the negative thoughts and negative energies that block our manifestations. And this is why we can embrace failure, because within that failure is an opportunity to recalibrate, to recenter in the positive outlook that can bring about the best possible outcomes. We aren't looking to analyze everything that went wrong. We're looking to see the difference between what we don't want and recenter and transform that failure into what we do want. Because at the end of the day, that failure is showing us that somewhere along the way, we separated from who we are and what we want. Somewhere along the way, we separated from who we are and what we want. If we can embrace failure, instead of looking at everything that went wrong, we can recenter back into who we are and what we truly want. So let's look at relationships, because this is the area of life that can trigger us like no other. It's probably the best learning classroom that we can ever walk into. Relationships are where we often experience the most growth, and that helps us in other areas of life, believe it or not. For instance, if you've had a failure in business or failure on a project, was there a relationship that was in the way? Someone was suppressing you, distracting you, impacting your energy. Someone was clouding your judgment or clouding your thinking or your decision making or even clouding your creativity. And this is why we want to embrace our failures, because in doing so, we can recalibrate and get back to the things in a more centered way that we want to bring to fruition. You know, I recently had a confrontation with a property manager who was honestly acting like a child. It took everything in me not to drop to her level. And I found that I had to embrace the situation, not fall to her level, but rise to who I meant to be in these situations, to influence and inspire, to find a creative solution with someone who had absolutely no interest in anything but creating drama. So by embracing these situations, we can ask, who do I want to be? Or who do I not want to be in some cases? We can ask, what have I learned? And then reapproach business with a fresh perspective. We can ask, who am I now? Or what do I value now as a result of the situation that I just went through? And look for the differences in what we want and what we don't want. And then focus on the situation with new clarity. For whatever's happened to us, whatever kind of failure it was, 
a small distraction, or a life-altering blow-up, we want to ask empowering questions after a failure that will help us with a beautiful recalibration. So let me give you a couple examples of empowering questions, and I'll put these up on the screen for you. Here are five empowering questions. And the first one that I use most often, this is always the first question I ask any of my clients, what was my objective? Be surprised how many people can't even tell me what their objective was in the first place. So that's an empowering question. What was my objective and what will my objective be moving forward? And the next question is, what did I learn to make sure this doesn't happen again? What did I learn? And the third question, am I looking for and seeing opportunities as a result of the situation? And the next question might be, am I listening and trusting my inner wisdom? Am I listening and trusting my wisdom? And finally, the fifth question, what's the best possible outcome in this situation? And that's one of my favorites because that can really open up some brainstorming. And as you know, I've said this so many times before, brainstorming itself opens up positive new energy flows. Now, if we're still swimming in the middle of a failure, just remember this. Can we change the energy? Always. Are we strong enough? That's the question. Mm, one of my favorites. Okay, let's make a shift here. I'd like you to think back to a past relationship. It could be good or bad. It could be a business partnership. It could be a collaboration with someone. It could be a vendor, or it could even be a love relationship. What usually happens in any relationship is that we come together in the beginning and we're looking for the best in each other. And this actually sets a very good foundation because what we're looking for, what we're putting our attention on is what we'll find. So we're finding the best in them and they're finding the best in us. That's part of what makes a new relationship so much fun. What we often don't see is that we are finding the best in ourselves. The other person is reflecting to us our very best qualities. Make sense? And when this happens, we have a type of synergy, a type of cooperation between us. It's a cooperation between the two people and it's a cooperation between our own self and our inner self. We're cooperating and seeing ourselves as our inner being sees us just because the other person is looking for the best in us, right? And this feels really good. What we don't realize is that we're both tuning in to who we really are at the same time. We're both tuning in to who we really are at the same time. And when we tune in to who we really are, well, something magical happens. We're becoming a vibrational match to our own inner being. And when we're matching up with our inner being, we're no longer subject to the negative thoughts of our ego thinking. Our energy is matched up with the spiritual perspective of love and compassion and patience and all the positive energy flows when we're seeing ourselves as our inner being sees us. Our perspective is higher. Our thought frequencies are higher. Every part of us is evolving in that early stage of a relationship, and it feels amazing. And by the way, little side note here, whenever we experience loss of someone that we've admired so much, this is where the heartache comes in because in a way, we've just lost the mirror of who we really are, of who we were as our spiritual self in the beginning of that relationship. A part of us just seems to die or we go off the deep end into anger or grief and we think it's all about them, the person we've lost, but we're actually grieving or angry with ourselves because now we've separated from our spiritual self. We've separated from our inner being. We've, got, we've been caught up in the dream or the drama of the relationship ending, and we totally missed that what really ended was the synergy between ourself and our own inner being. That's why the loss of a relationship can impact us so much. All right. Now, I know for some of you, this is something brand new to think about. So let's move on from relationships to business relationships, because even in a business relationship, we can feel as much betrayal as we feel in a love relationship, right? We think they betrayed us when we may have betrayed ourselves. We may have put so much into this partnership or this collaboration that it became all about the other person instead of 
holding on to that vibrational match that we had with our own inner being, with our own values, our own integrity, how we were seeing ourselves, and how we were evolving spiritually. Because remember, we're all striving for one thing. We want to reach and expand into more of who we really are and who we're becoming. You see, people quite naturally want to feel appreciation from each other, so much so that they sometimes forget about being a vibrational match to their own inner being, to who they really are at their core. And it starts to be more about blaming the other person than appreciating the person for who they are. Now, you may be thinking, but Ramey, I was in a situation like that, and the other person just became impossible. They became an ogre. They showed me their true colors, and they didn't deserve my appreciation. <laughs> Well, we've all been there. All I'm saying is that if we're feeling negative emotion about someone, we may have fallen into the ego thinking that wants to criticize, complain, and place blame. This isn't who we are when we're spiritually centered. This isn't how our inner being would see things. Because when we judge or express negative emotions, that's the moment we separate from who we really are at our core. When we blame another person, we're saying, I'd feel better if you weren't behaving that way. We see this with a lot of dependency and codependency where one person enables another person. Maybe it's a mom who drives her son to buy drugs because she doesn't want to see him homeless and living on the streets where he may get shot. She'll say, I love my son, but what's really happening is she'd feel better and that's why she's enabling. By enabling though, is she separating from who she really is at her core? Now, I'm just using this example very loosely just to give you a quick example. I'm not interested in opening up a conversation about drug or alcohol addiction. I'm just presenting the question. If you're feeling negative emotions about another person, if you're judging them, trying to change them, have you separated from yourself and who you really are? Have you fallen into the negative thinking of ego who wants to be disempowering? When we're centered in our true selves, when we're aligned with our inner being, we're more interested in raising another person's frequency into higher and better thoughts than we are in delving into drama. When we're a vibrational match to our own inner being, we're tuned in to who we are at our core and our spiritual perspective is on making things better, not holding someone down, not changing them, not expressing a lower vibration in any way at all. So if we're experiencing any kind of relationship business or otherwise that's challenging, we're simply being asked to drive in our own lane, to get our own house in order and manage our own energy. We're being asked to express the love and compassion that comes so naturally for us. We're being asked to tune in to who we truly are at our spiritual core. And the other person's energy will either raise to be with us or they'll fall away. We want to empower ourselves so that we are naturally empowering others. And we don't even have to try. We don't have to manipulate. We don't have to try and change anyone. The beautiful calibration that comes after the heartache of failure is really our opportunity to see the difference between what we don't want and what we do want, to see the difference between who we are and who we don't want to be. And then we can get back to the business of creating the positive outcomes that we're looking for. This is our hidden power, and it's kind of magical. As we empower ourselves, we're choosing a higher frequency, higher and better thoughts, because our choice of frequency can change the course of our journey, and it can change the course of others' journey as well. So reflecting back on everything we covered today, how can you apply what you've learned? Where have you experienced a failure that with a simple shift in perspective, you can see that there was an opportunity to become more of who you really are? <laughs> well, I hope this helps you as you're using the powers of alchemy to transform challenges and obstacles into positive new successes. This podcast is all about helping you progress in your spiritual growth and have success on life's journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. If you still can't get your head around what's got you stuck, you can tell me about it. You can send me a question to questions at unlockyourhiddenpower.com, or I also have a free guide available for you if you'll simply visit unlockyourhiddenpower.com. Of course, if you're already right here on the podcast page and not listening through iTunes or one of the others, then you'll see it right there for you at the top of the right-hand column. What is this free guide all about? Well, if you've ever thought to yourself, 
man, I need to get my life back, or you're just having a hard time that you can't seem to recover from, then you've probably suffered invalidation or abuse or spiritual injury somewhere along the way. Knowing how to take back your life so you can just move forward is one of the most common questions I get. Unfortunately, finding your way back to you is easier than it might seem. This new guide is the first step in getting out of the sheer frustration of being stuck and spinning your wheels on success that seems elusive. Well, thanks for joining me today. I'm wishing you a life filled with all the alchemy you need to bring success to you. Feel free to share this video with anyone you know who's feeling stuck. And don't forget to grab your free guide at unlockyourhiddenpower.com.